Anyway, I'm here. I'm here again. I'm always here. I'm here for you, brother. I'm here for you, sister. I'm here for you, world. And uh, it's just six minutes before the call. I was hoping Jess would jump on a little bit sooner, but we're going to see how it plays out. I'm going to roll up these sleeves. This is going to be a serious, lighthearted meet and greet, love fest with the brothers. <clears throat> Now, what I could do is I can turn off the video. Oh. Come on in, Jess. I'm doing the lighting thing. Can you hear me? Yeah, just barely though. Oh, hold on a second. I have to. I'm resetting this light. Oh, my the volume was down on my. Computer. Oh, it, it, it's on your end of wor the world. Yeah, that seems right good. Blessings, blessings. It's good to see your shiny face this morning. Likewise. I'm glad we got to uh, put our our life forces and our our hearts together. Uh, in a way that we can share our journey and our discoveries of life uh, with people who are here. I love it. Love it. <laughs> so you're at home right now? Yeah, I'm at home. My boys are out there doing their school and whatnot. <laughs> and uh, I had some garden plans, but then it snowed. So that was for yesterday, but that's it's when we got it because i'm just swamped with all kinds of stuff that i'm working on so you know well everything in divine order and time always right <laughs> yeah and i have a feeling knowing what kind of soul you are is that your heart and your passion goes into all your work <laughs> yeah that's it's part of my stars i'm a quadruple aries so a lot of fire <laughs> all right so it's not work <laughs> yeah no i love it right on uh, i came up with this idea about six years ago that we've evolved from the teachings of uh, law of intention and law of attraction remember those so-called uh, universal laws yeah and now what we're doing is just put you just put your attention on what you love and let love bring you all that you love and you'll have more than you'll know what to do with right yeah just focus on what you love and it becomes and and the rest just will you know arrive definitely some tr deep truth to that pretty much so um i'm open to however you want to uh run this uh conversation i i did come up with a page and a half of questions as if i was going to really know your heart and your life and your journey Oh, you're so, uh, I'm touched by that, the way your empathetic nature, the way you really connect out, you know, I, I appreciate that you're interested. I'm just my humble little path, you know, we're all just walking our little path. <laughs> we are, but our paths intersect and our paths are affecting all paths. So um, it's, a, it's, it's an honor and a joy to join with you because I've, I've watched your life. I've, uh, you know, I followed you and I followed you connecting with Ella Tom and some other great, so John DePass? Yeah. Yeah, I love John. John's my buddy. I need to connect and, with him again. He's got a good heart. Well, good. Uh, catch him on a day when he's not eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> um, so um, the reason I said it that way is that if you want to throw questions my way, it can go in either direction, even though I uh, put together a so-called script the other night. Um, I like the free flow. Me too. Just have a conversation. Yeah. I have some questions that come to mind. I'm just curious about, you know, so we'll just see where it goes naturally. I like that. that works okay. Well. Uh, let me take a deep breath and we'll get it going here. Okay. Uh, let's ring the bell. Clear out any 
find it funny juju in the room. In. No, we're <laughs> juju in the room. <laughs> and I have a backup in case I need some extra help getting rid of obstacles. Oh, oh heck yeah. Yeah. Nice. Ganesha, uh, he he, ro he rocks. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I have all kinds of charms around me, but this is my wife's charms because I'm on her side of the bed. Here's some healing corn that our medicine man friend uses for like a massage. Mm -hmm. oh. is, is it just the, uh, is it just the leftover corn or is there any pieces that come off? Um, no, this like, is, well, this is, you know, it's a cob, you know, of, of dent corn that, from him as Pueblo. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's one they use specifically for healing because it does like hold to the the, the cob more, you know, mm -hmm. and you can use it to like massage and work stuff out. But, yeah, it looks like using a uh, loofah sponge. Yeah, kind of. Um, it's more, you know, it's really like hard. So, it, you know, you can get in and get some, uh, you know, uh, some fascia. breakup of the fascia, you know. Are you are you a body worker? Uh, no, I'm just a, I'm a herbalist, just an herbalist, and a, I do I work on the body of Mother Earth. I do Reiki and healing arts with her, but um, yeah, no, I haven't that. worked with people yet, though. No, besides just with herbs and guiding them to herbs. Okay, well, you, you can extend your love in the form of touch anytime you want. I'm sure people will not uh, resist. Yeah, I'm all about sending, sending it, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, we can, we can do that anytime. Now, I'm currently living at a place in Boulder, Colorado called um, Sanctuary Garden. And uh -huh. it has, oh, it has a, it's a lovely place. I've known these folks for 26, 27 years. And when my apartment uh, mate had a meltdown because of COVID and that whole insanity, she was actually a CNN addict. Uh, mm. I couldn't stand to be in her presence or that apartment. So uh, I said adios and moved in here at the retreat center. And I've been on retreat for over a year. Mm. Mm, nice. Boulder, that's my brother lives in Boulder. Um, so I, it's beautiful there, the flat irons and it's a great, great place. Great place. A lot of uh, spiritual activity. There's a lot of um, alternative this and that here. You can find it here. This actually, this town actually got started in the 60s when Ram Das and Timothy Leary and Allen Ginsberg, they showed up, dropped acid, started sharing uh, philosophy and created a whole gen new generation. Yeah, I know those are some of my heroes in my early life, for sure. Big time. All the counterculture revolutionaries, you know. Um, that was a big part of my heart. I felt that I was born like 20 years too late. I should have gone through the 60s and it was in my mind, you know, but because um, that whole vibration, I think we're kind of riding out, you know, some of we're going to be experiencing some of that, you know, vibration more and more as, you know, time goes on. That was like the first, you know, dawning of the age of Aquarius and that the rebirth of like, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, a natural human culture, a caring human culture, and all of that. Well, what Ram Das was teaching us is still true, holds true today, and it holds true in every moment. Right. Absolutely. Remember his brilliant words of be here now. And the folks who got here get it. <laughs> it seems so. I remember. Uh, reading that book, that book was super um, a revolutionary sort of transition book as I was transitioning to adulthood and totally like in that confusion, you know, depression, what am I here for? What is this, you know, world, mm -hmm. etc. And uh, reading that and being like, oh yeah, oh my God, it's so, it's so dumb. It's so simple, you know? Yeah. Like just quit trying to make it into something it's not yeah and just be in it you know yeah but easier said than done <laughs> <It's not> well <laughs> uh have you have you noticed that when you start to uh 
tap into what's called awakening or God consciousness or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's more of a, a confirmation that you're you're on point or you're right where you need to be and you still got work to do. Yeah, it's effortless. And yet you got to, you know, kind of put forth effort every day, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. honing yourself, you know, to where you want to go to what we want to be, you know, and it's interesting. It's like that whole thing of Fibonacci. I think of like, you know, creation's always getting better and better. And, and so, you know, there's something inside of us that, you know, wants to go with that, you know, mm -hmm. um, we get, we, um, stagnate, you know, you get stuck in the mire, you start to feel it. You start mm -hmm. to go into entropy in your mind mm -hmm. and, in your body and everything. And so it's, it's what I love about Taoism, that whole, you know, that whole kind of be in the now, uh, mm -hmm. philosophy from Ram Dass mm -hmm. of going with the flow of creation, recognizing creation's rhythms and harmonizing with them, you know, so that we can experience greater harmony. Mm -hmm. And would, would you say that um, <clears throat> there's a personalized, I want to take it to the individual so I won't go big picture on you too fast here, uh, Jess. Would you say, <laughs> Amy wants to come in. I hope she's going to put herself on mute here. Amy, do you know Amy O'Rourke? Mm, oh, yeah. Hi, Amy. Amy, unmute yourself. Say hi. Hi, guys. How are you? Doing great, Amy. Good. Amy. Glad to have it. Glad to have you with us today. <laughs> I'm happy to be with y'all. Amy's We're, one of the transformation buddies. Oh, far out. Where do you live, Amy? Indiana. Indiana. Mm -hmm. Have you made your way? Have you made your way down to New Mexico? No, I have not traveled that far west yet. I want to. Well, hitch up your cart to your horses and giddy up. <laughs> giddy up. <laughs> You're always welcome. We'd, we'd love to see you sometime, Amy, if you're ever in the neck of the woods, for sure. Always I'll let you know if I'm out that way, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. For sure. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, Jess, Jess, where are you born? I was born in Los Alamos, New Mexico, which is a very weird and interesting place to grow up because... Uh, 50,000 Indian Native Americans used to live there. It's this beautiful mesa plateau uh, that's, you know, pristine with mountains and everything, but it's also the place where the atom bomb was, was birthed. So yeah, uh, quite a dichotomy to grow up with. More churches per capita than any other place in the world and more PhDs per capita than any other place in the world. So, so you got more PhDs and you've got, what else was there? Churches. More churches. Okay. So what's the suicide rate out there? Actually is a very, you know, it's a very interesting town because it's very um, kind of cookie cutter suburban town, you know, um, it, it was very, you know, mainstream is very mainstream middle class, but we lived in the mountains and all around us, we were sur surrounded by native northern new mexicans indian tribes you know um indian uh archaeological remnants you know so there was that whole weird thing in this town was very it was very safe we could run around and play out in the woods all late at night with the kids in town and you know it was really great growing up there but it was very insular you know um and not really connected with what was going on with the rest of the state um, mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, this weird dichotomy of like, I knew so many people that were, you know, successful and smart and, you know, into healthy eating and they would exercise and, you know, dynamic and they would go build bombs all day, you know, and your young mind is like, I, you know, I don't quite get it, you know, and don't quite, mm -hmm. and then you well, go to church and they're like, oh yeah, be good to each other. And, you know. But yeah, go build some more bombs. 
you know. Right. So you got to experience firsthand. Amy, you might experience too. Uh, by the way, I was I was born and raised in El Paso. Oh, okay. Not uh -huh. far from you. And I grew up as a border kid. Nice. You know, my my dad was ex army. Excuse me, ex air force. My mom was a stay at home mom raising three kids, and I'm going to school in the '60s and '70s. The whole time going, this ain't it. This ain't it. This. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So was was there a point in your life when you came to the decision that I got to know what my life's really all about and what's why am I on this planet? Did you get to that point before you started on your spiritual journey? Wow. It's it's an interesting question because to me, it feels like it was like maybe echoes at first. Mm -hmm. you know? I remember one of my earliest memories, I always tell people about my herbalism classes because I swear it was the day the plants called to me mm. and I was like two or three years old and I'd gone uh, hiking with my folks and I fell asleep on my dad's back and I woke up um, and this field of flowers, you know, and I just looked around, I was like, cool, I made heaven, I arrived good <laughs> and um it was like a feeling it was a spiritual feeling you know um and it felt like what how could you describe a spiritual feeling yeah right the Tao that can be spoken <laughs> is not the real Tao, my brother <laughs> um it was it was just an amazing feeling you know it felt like heaven and uh you know i was always as a youth like seeking that feeling and uh you know love being able to play around in the hills and in the mountains and always being connected you know to nature gave me a pretty continuous sense of that you know but so then, it was kind of it was drip feeding you it was yeah drip feeding. but at the same time i was being inculcated you know by the system by society and church and school and everything else and mm -hmm. so definitely in my like uh late teens early 20s you know, 18, 19, 20, suffered through depression, you know, wasn't eating well, was eating, you know, McDonald's and, you know, whatever I could get my hands on, you know, just to, it was exploratory years of your life. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I went through a, a pretty strong depression my freshman year in college and came home and got, I, mean, I had been in that time very also very much exploring my spirituality through uh, vision plants and i'd started meditating when i was about 18. Mm -hmm. um because my sister was like hey you like to get high you should try the breath and i was like yeah. i'll try that you know yeah and it was you know i still maintain that you get a, a stronger longer lasting better high from breath than you can from anything else um so it's um it's the best high and the whole thing of the secrets in the secretions all those you know neurotransmitters that people take in vision plants to be able to access greater vision is actually inside of you and yeah yeah the dmt the serotonin you know itself uh is very much like uh, uh the chemical in psilocybin mushrooms you know so i was going through this exploration but not treating my temple well and so I went through a, you know, a depression, which caused me to get better, get onto vegetarian diet, started meditating more seriously, just dropped out of college and went home to heal for a while. Stayed did, with mom. Did, you know? did any chance did you have a, an influence like a spiritual text or a, a, an enlightened master or a young child who happened to be transmitting God at the moment and said just the perfect thing? I, uh, Buddha, Buddhism rang true to me always. I remember when I was a young person, like even seeing like, like Kung Fu films and seeing Buddha, I just get all like reverent, you know, I feel it, you know. And uh, so my parents were trying to send me through uh, catechism and they were like, so you want confirmation? I was like, I'm, I'm kind of jiving with the Buddha better. And I was really happy that my my folks my stepdad was like here's this great book snow leopard you know here's uh herman hess's siddhartha you know um check it out and 
uh, so and he gave me Ram Das too. He gave me my first Ram Das recordings, and that was all very good guidestones. Um, we hear now the Tao Te Ching and Dhammapada in that time, and still have remained a massive thread for me. Um, Did you at that time? Uh, let's say hi to Lani real quick. She's uh, joined us. And she may be a fan of yours. Greetings. Hi, La hi Lonnie. Welcome to Lonnie. our call. Hi. Hi. I'm not showing my face yet because I'm not ready yet. I'm getting ready for my own show here, but I'm happy to be here. I, I'm not familiar with you, and that's why I'm here to, to get familiar. Well, blessings. Greetings. Blessings. So pleased to meet you. Thank you. Nice to have you, Lonnie. So, Jesse, were there, uh, when you started doing this, um, <clears throat> These, this spiritual journey, we're just going to call it that. What disciplines or practices um, did you start then? And which spiritual practices are you still doing today uh, that seems to be making the biggest impact on you finding yourself and staying peaceful despite what's going on everywhere? Number one, number one, number one, meditation. Meditation, meditation. Hmm. Not just breath work. A lot of people are doing breath work. A lot of people are getting high off their breath. <laughs> Meditation is getting centered. Meditation is getting balanced, getting relaxed, you know, getting into rest and digest and out of fight or flight or out of, you know, you want to be able to access. If, if you, the more relaxed you are, the more brainwave states you can access and the more of your whole nervous system you can access. So it's really about being relaxed, you know, nose breathing, meditation has been my guide uh, now for 26 years. And that's been the number one thing for sure, for sure. That and nature, just contact with nature, being yeah. in nature. Well, you're there, nice. you're there, you're there a lot. How long have you had the uh, Zia permaculture uh, business going on out there? Well, uh, yeah, this has been basically a thread from those years. I really saw, I felt, I had vision through the vision plants and through my meditation and working on it and starting to get, dial in with diet and everything that, um, you know, at first I had this sensation like, oh no, there's too many of us human beings. We're destroying the earth. And I realized later on, actually now through practice, that it's, we're not bad for the earth. It's our way. It's our approach. It's our philosophy, you know, that's bad for the earth. Um, so um, I'm glad you said that because some people, some people would misunderstand that and they might think we're parasites and we're not health. We're not good for the planet. We are actually here as gardeners of this world. We're that's here to make the world a better place, you know, to more abundant, more beautiful. Um, we've been acting parasitically. But that's the, you know, this metamorphosis that we can do right now, you know, like a caterpillar goes through the garden, eating up all your, your tomatoes and like doing terrible things, you know, but then it um, goes into its chrysalis and more metamorphosizes and becomes a butterfly and then pollinates and does nothing but benefit. Right. So mm -hmm. we're in a chrysalis right now, I, I contend. <laughs> and um, we're gonna, you know, move to that morphosis, another phase of being where we're actually uh, in resonance with our Earth Mother, because we have no other. We realize now we're coming up against like, oh yeah, Mom's always done everything for us, you know, like a teenager going off to college, like where you get those reality downloads, you know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mom's always doing it, you know. So She's Jeff. <clears throat> Jess, would you say with all the attention, um, all our attention these days being redirected or uh, misdirected into fear instead of love, and we're going to eventually start talking about love again, because that seems to be what's going to heal us and return us back to our balance and our sanity. <clears throat> with all that going on, do you think there's still as much participation in hands-on gardening, permaculture, and earth-related uh, activities, uh, or do you think that's slowed down? Um, you mean as, as per last year? Or you, just, yeah, I want to know if people are still relating to the earth as much as we have. Yeah, definitely not as our distant past, but I think it's coming in stronger now. 
I think people are starting to feel this, you know, need for the connection with Mother Earth, the need for something stable. Like we've been, our foundation of our philosophy and our economics and everything has been on this mm -hmm. shaky foundation, <clears throat> yeah. not on the stable foundation of creation, you know? Um, so we're always uh, upheld and nurtured by Mother Earth. We're always showered with millions of blessings we just don't always recognize them or acknowledge them or, you know, do anything with them, you know? So I think it's a time for that Donnie, you know, that mm -hmm. gone in this last year seen so much with respect to, you know, this experience we're going through and its connection with our food and our health and the environment. And, you know, um, so, I, I think of it in permacultural terms is, you know, they say there is no problems. The, the problem is the solution. So a problem is pointing out what's flawed in the system that needs to be redesigned, you know, rethought mm -hmm. so that we can do things better. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually very hopeful, you know, because I, I see that we can. I, I see tons of people moving into gardening. I see tons of people moving into the consciousness and it's more about this consciousness. If we can uh, create that loving place in our heart, you know, for ourselves and for other beings and for the world, then um, we'll start mm -hmm. to matter more. That, that actually well, has to come first. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, that, that's very hopeful and that's very inspiring. And uh, what I've been putting my attention on a lot these days is that we've already arrived. We're already complete and we're whole and we're perfect. We found our innocence. We found our center. We found our balanced uh, being again. We're sane. You know, we're in the kitchen with our kids. Uh, <laughs> um, and love <clears throat> is here in this air, we, what we call air. I mean, th there is a, a plasma state, a certain state, and many people who are talking about fifth dimensional ways of living and being are already operating from this eternal heart space where everything comes from there. We, we speak from our heart. We see things through our heart. We filter it through our heart. And that seems to be, per from my personal experience, I see love everywhere. I see lovers at the park. I see rainbows. I see things I would have missed because I'm keeping my attention present with my feelings and my love. I love that. That's beautiful. And it's, I try to remind everyone that we're heart beings first. Because <laughs> we're heart beings first. I love oh, you. I love you oh, too. You're beautiful. Oh. Oh, we Stop had a moment. <laughs> let the water, let the waters heal. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful water. Yeah. It's all precious. You guys are precious. We've all found each other at this point in time for a reason, and we don't need to know it, but we're having a love fest. So join on in. Who's ever watching, please join in. The more the merrier. Bring it on. The bring the love. Bring the tears. <laughs> this is, you know, uh, the, the empaths, we have to do the processing for the others who are not, you know, um, it's part of our love duty. Um, but love is yeah. everything. Love is infinite and we're heart beings first. It's the first organ that forms is your heart, not your skull, you know? Um, and it's an electromagnetic dynamo that extends way beyond your body. And we're always in subtle, subtle conversation through the heart field with all things. And so to be in your center of your heart and, and love always wins, love drives everything. You know, you can't, if you don't have, a, have love for something that just, there's, there's no, no juice, you know. I think love yep. is, you know, we were gonna talk, I think sometime today, a bit about prana. I think that's what prana is. I think it's love. That prana is love. And prana prana all... definitely is love. And if you're gonna put your toe in the prana water, brother, <laughs> <laughs> let's move to pranaism, breatharianism. Uh, something called you to that journey. What was it? And how's it going for you? And eventually I want to know about Elatom. Well, yeah, 
Well, so it's just, you know, on the same vibration of everything is love. What drew me to it is that, you know, uh, wanting to be in wholeness and balance in my own self, you know, feeling not balance, you know, and being like, this isn't what I want. Um, and mm -hmm. being strongly moved toward it, you know, and it's, I, I think it's an inevitability for all of us. I think all the stuff we're going through collectively is part of it, you know, and we all have these agreements, you know, ahead of time that we're going to go through it together and play certain roles for each other, you know. Uh, how did you, how did you hear about it? Yeah, I go off on tangents. Yes. How did, That's okay. it, I heard about it first uh, through, I think it was uh, the Buddhist sage Milarepa. Um, mm -hmm. Because as a Buddhist, I was reading, uh, you know, as much material as I could. And that book really strung a chord for me. And there is a, a, a part in the 10,000 Songs of Milarepa where he, he goes off into the mountains in winter and everyone's like, oh no, Milarepa's dead. He has no food and all he has is this cloth. And, you know, and he, he was just living on the prana and staying warm on Dumo fire like Wim Hof, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have more modern day examples of people who can do this. You know, um, did you come and, across? Did you come across the teachings, or did you meet uh, Jazz Yaz, Jazz Muhin? Yes, yes. Uh, I watched uh, that. I then I got into sun gazing as I revisited my healing later in life because I got got pretty good with it, but then I got back into old habits, you know, and started to suffer again. And 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 when I had young children, I realized I had to like get get good with it again and I started sun gazing and I so I ran into HRM um the sun gazing teacher yeah and, who also is a breatharian um and and then that turned me onto a movie called in the beginning there was light I think is the name of the movie that has a uh, uh, Ray Mayor and Jazz Muheen um and Ray Mayor was actually my first lead in I really have great heart bow and love for that man he's he carries a beautiful light and he really you know has a gentle way to approach it like you know, a lot of breatharians go in like all oh, right we're gonna superman up you know yeah, yeah it's, i kind of feel like that's that appeals to me more as a gentle approach yeah um, well you can't really bully that that loving flow that loving energy um did um was it ray who who allowed himself to go through a hospital system and be tested and prodded to so these guys could uh you know they try to dispel what he was doing and he showed them yeah Is he went it? on israeli tv for eight days they they uh totally uh kept cameras on him at all times and everything and he spent eight days without food and you know blue doors on all their scientists and they all left scratching their heads <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, man, I knew it. And, and I felt it in my, that second phase of healing is when I got into raw foods, started sun gazing again, got deep with my meditation practice again, got more consistent with it. And that's, you know, that's when the meals started tapering off. And I was just happening, you know, naturally where I was like, I was eating three raw meals a day and then it was two after some years and then it was one. Mm -hmm. you know, knowing about the bio photons, knowing about grounding. I'm always in the garden barefoot, you know, yes. grounding or gathering herbs in the forest, you know, sucking up that, those good bio photons. And then I came up, yes, I. Yay, foot power. I got black ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, but then I came across Ellie Tom and what appealed to me about him was his simple nature uh, and his um, approach of breatharianism for the common man and not an expensive retreat, mm -hmm. but a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and yeah, I've been, I've been following that man for, and listening to almost everything he says, you know, for years uh, now, for maybe five years. And I, through listening to him and the information from Ray, I put myself through my own breatharian transition and 
took four days with that. I ramped up. I uh, dry fasting. I first would dry fast for like 24 hours and then 36 and then 48. This is what I suggest to people. It, did your wife, minute. did your wife and family know you were doing this? Yes, they did. And they, they're all they cool? leaders. They're all, you know, like it has been, there were dynamics because my wife jumped in with me to begin with, you know, and we, I was having such an amazing healing and she was not, you know, and I, I felt this, I felt, you know, from my early wounds of my, my folks divorcing this sense of separation that I had to heal through. And I had, you know, I was unkind, you know, in that I wanted them to be like doing what I was doing. And I wasn't unkind in that I was like terrible or tyrannical with them or anything, but I wasn't loving in the attitude that they needed to direct their own healing and their own through their own higher self wisdom you know so that was a lesson that came you know? yeah and that leads to another question now uh some of you might have heard i drink my pee okay. and uh i noticed over the many <laughs> thank you i noticed many 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 times i look back on my journey when i gave up the american diet and went into raw foods. I joined a raw food community in 1977 in Austin, Texas. And it was pioneering. There was about 50 people in the community. We had a garden, all organic. We had a greenhouse. We had a sprouting operation, compost from the circus. We had elephant shit. I mean, it was full grown. We had a 24 hour juice bar that was attached to a, 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 um, a co-op. And then I started to notice that as I went back into the real world, because I lived there with that, in a bubble, you didn't know what was going on. You just lived in that world for two years. I had to, de I had to make a transition back into the other world. I noticed the same, and, and being able to um, go with the same people you walked on the journey to the next couple steps started you know, thinning out when I got into fruitarianism. People started thinning out when I got into urine therapy. People started thinning out, but I had to get to a universal understanding was that was all made up by me. And everybody was, I still saw everybody as someone I wanted to love and be close to. And I found ways to do that by not discussing diet, nutrition, spiritual stuff. So we could your just connect stuff. as human. Your, your but, favorite but, thing. Sorry to interrupt you. I know what that's like though. It's like, okay, I'm just going to not talk about my favorite stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah it's you know, your hobby <laughs> yeah but there, there is a lovingness in it and it has it is that thing of like you know it's an attitude you know of like i see this a lot just with the community you know in general our you know our community of human beings like we want we've been accustomed to homogenization you know everyone's supposed to go to the same school and know the same things you know from your compulsory education and eat the same things and Mm -hmm. you know, we're all very uniquely different you know and um our because of this practice of wanting this hegemony like i see it you know i love our vegan community but when they're nasty to people who eat meat we're not helping them bring them over you know that's mm, not that's bring contradiction. Love creation or represent our community you know mm -hmm. it's just putting forth more uh, of that acidic anger that we're trying to get alkaline right you know so um just trying to think and, and think ways that are more tactful and more humble you know more loving like we were talking about you more know, joining i have a question for lonnie right you know so. i have a question for lonnie yes <clears throat> i go to shopping centers and i go to grocery stores with no mask on i don't know if you're that kind of person but it's taken me a couple of rounds to go through there without being on guard, thinking I have to defend myself or tell them I have a medical excuse to just walk through and love everyone unconditionally and just realize everybody's where they need to be. And once I got into a calm place to walk into the store, just look for what I wanted and get out. I had incredible experiences with people. Yeah, you're setting so you're setting your vibration at a certain a certain place where you're you're just protected energetically. That's what it is. I haven't worn a mask once, but I live in a very, very small town. So mm -hmm. I kind of avoid most situations anyways. Um, mm -hmm. Just have discovered other ways to, you know, get the food that I need. But I've been juicing 
<laughs> what I'm doing. It's the step, it's the phase that, that I'm in is the, the juice uh, feasting. Um, but I imagine, you know, the struggles and challenges like doing it with a partner or spouse or family members, that kind of thing. We can't all be on the same level doing it at the same pace because we've had different experiences. We come with different things. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're not integrating meditation into that in a way that needs that just needs to be there yes. in order to get get the results and the benefits and the healing that why we're doing this in the first place right um so it just it just is what it is so i like what you said brother sage about how you just you just kept going things were thinning out around you and that's okay you, you, <laughs> knew what you needed to do for you and and to connect with something much larger than than you know these bodies so um, but I, I, I have so many questions, Jesse, you'll need to come on my show sometime. Um, but that being said, I mean, I have to go and get ready for that now. I'm so sorry. I really want to stay. I have so many questions and I want to keep hearing, but you're going to be putting this on your channel, right? Sage. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll I have the, I'll have the link later today. Okay, great. Then I'll come back and watch it. So bless you guys. I love you guys. Have a fantastic rest you, of the show. Have a great show. Best of love, Lonnie. Reach out. I'd love to connect. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. Bye, Amy. Bye, Lonnie. Nice meeting you. You too. Bye, Amy. Oh, I mean, uh, bye, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying. Hey. <laughs> Amy's my buddy. She does uh, a Vim Hoth cold therapy and jumps in the cold water and does grounding and is with our uh, juice company and all that stuff. So she's on the level with it too. Another family member. Yeah. Yes. Have you noticed uh, because of social media, you have more close friends and more loved ones than you had locally? Absolutely. Yes. I connect with more people all over than the people that I actually know. Yeah. I was always the outcast of everything. And now that I'm finding people that I'm like, oh, there's people like me. <laughs> I don't feel as the black sheep of the world anymore. No more. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we have this uh, technology now. It kind of reminds me of the 1960s. I don't know if you remember, Jesse, in 1968, there was the Jetsons, a cartoon show. Yeah, totally. All <laughs> right. There was a scene where, um, uh, let's see, Judy's the daughter. What's the wife, George's wife's name? Uh Jane? Jane. Jane Jane gets a video phone call. This is very futuristic. 1968. She gets a, a video phone call from George and she says, hold on a second. So she spends 30 seconds with this robot fixing her face up. And all of a sudden she's on the screen and she looks gorgeous. Well, little <laughs> did we know that 80, uh, 50 years later, we'd be doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And these are like little the Star Trek communicators, right? Like exactly. Super computer in your hand. You know. Yeah, remember the last couple models where it would pop up, flip open? Yeah, right. Yeah, that definitely Just felt like it. The old ones. Um, while we still got you on the line, could you tell folks about the upcoming uh, Wild Foods Walk? Oh, yeah. Uh, just going to be on Saturday, um, weather permitting. We keep having uh, bouts of snow hit us, but just going to. It's one of my favorite things is to walk people through nature and uh, uh, demonstrate this idea of pronoia, that the universe is conspiring in your favor. Nice. Because you walk through the forest and I, I could show you pretty much anyone, anywhere, more than 90% of the food around, stuff around you is food. It's all food or medicine. Mm -hmm. you know, some of it's poison. But even the poison can be used as medicine if, if properly prepared and administered. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, the universe, it's this whole thing of the universe has always got your back. It's one of the reasons why I connected with Ellie Tom. You would say uh, the universe is user friendly, you know, and the prana being everywhere, you know, we're in a sea of energy. Does a fish know that it's in a sea of water? You know, we're energy beings in a sea of energy. Mm -hmm. so how can people find out about the uh the walk um so they can check out all of our events uh zeopermaculture.com um so uh we're gonna be that's gonna be this weekend it's actually all full already 
but we're going to be doing a permaculture design course in May. We're going to teach people how to, you know, design naturalistically. It could be in the urban setting or, you know, in the rural setting. Um, we, where we, you can create 80 acres worth of food on one acre if you design things properly um, through rainwater harvesting, through agroforestry, you know, um, and special soil uh, understanding. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad that in, in May, I'm going to be doing events throughout the summer of more walks and fermentation classes. And uh, I'm going to do a, start doing pranic activations. I've been, you know, nice. a liquidarian for four years now. I've, I'm starting to feel my confidence, you know. <laughs> do, do you have days where you feel like uh, you're stronger than other days or where there's some leftover residue of a detox and stuff is coming through you? Oh, man. I had in like uh, with the conjunction uh, uh -huh. in December, I did a month of uh, dry fasting for 24 hours and then I would refeed for a few and then dry fast for 16 to 18 and refeed on liquids. And I felt so strong and so amazing, but I hit a wall mm. and then I had to binge on liquids for like a month, you know, and it was, I didn't get into solids again, but I got, I had to take so much liquid for a while. All right, let me get this straight. You binged on liquids for a month. Did you have any trace of guilt? No. <laughs> Cause you used the word I, binge. <laughs> I did. I did have a trace of guilt only in that, not guilt, it's more like that vibe of that, what I felt in the month before, I wanted it to keep going. And this is what we okay, do, so with, right? And you have to honor, this is what I've learned in my healing through prana and all things is like the ebb and flow, right? So mm -hmm. you have to fast and refeed. And I didn't give myself enough refeed in that time. To do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, well I'm, I'm, glad we're I'm glad we're having this talk. And I'm going to go to the big picture on this one. I got to. I'm glad we're talking about breatharianism, fasting, dry fasting, herb identification, plant identification, Shivambu water therapy, because as anybody who's paying attention to what's happening on the world scene, when infrastructures collapse and we no longer have access to man made foods and man made medicines and uh, everything like that. People are gonna have to get back to identifying plants. They're gonna have to get back to fasting. They're gonna have to be driven inward to an, the journey, which a lot of people are doing anyway. So it's always good to have these options out to people who are in tough times. And the answers are also right here. Yes, yes, I, I feel that. I, that's really what's driven me to all of this, you know, and a sense of freedom a sense of freedom and love that we can have through these connections and through this kind of resilience. And it is something everyone can do, every mm -hmm. single person. It's not something um, special and that you can't do. You know? oh, oh, exactly. Now, uh, when I lived in Austin, when I lived in Hawaii, and now I live in Colorado, uh, it's where spirits got me based right now, um, I go for three, four, five mile hikes every day. And I found abandoned plum orchards and apricot orchards and there's figs. I mean, there's abundance of fruit, much less abundance of herbs uh, everywhere once your eyes are open to be able to identify them. At all times of the year in all places, but you know, it's, and it's more taking on that mode of being a gardener. We've been mm -hmm. consumers, we're creators, we're gods, right? So creators create, so we can take our creative energy and apply it to the land and our understanding of our connection with it, have that resilience and the strength that that food will give you mm -hmm. and grow into these, you know, the way I understand you grow prana, the pranic state, the way it happened for me is I just grow, grew into my greatest health, you know, that's nothing more than a you know, health message and ways to grow into vitality. Um, and this is the prerogative of nature. Everything in nature is seeking uh, equilibrium and vitality. So. Uh, is that the same as the word homeostasis? Yeah. I said equanimity. I meant equilibrium, but. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Too. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. You get, you have free speech on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
do you want to meaning to ask you some questions too i don't know how much time we have but uh if there's a time limit or anything but keep going we got we got at least 30 minutes okay okay cool i was wondering how long because you said you started in the 60s you were doing um that stuff there in in boulder and when did you get start not boulder when did you get no. started yourself on all the, on your healing path um, I was referring to uh, some of the generation's influences in the 60s was in Boulder. Oh, yeah. I grew, I grew up in El Paso, and I was a desert kid, and I was trying to figure out my way through a family, my way through high school, my way through being a social being. Um, uh, then I ended up in college in Lubbock, and the only thing that rescued me and also started me on my journey was drugs, sex, and rock and roll, and, uh, <laughs> and so... Uh, I started and I discovered that there was a spiritual buffet. So I was trying out the Hare Krishnas. I was trying out the Buddhist the Buddhism. I was trying out breatharianism and and yoga. And I just I put my foot in everything I could. I gobbled it all up and spiritual teachers and masters kept showing up. And at one point I'm in Austin and my friend ends up leaving me. We were painting Willie Nelson's motel and he decides to run off and join the Air Force. And I found an ex-lover of mine. She says, no, go join Green Life Raw Food Place and they'll let you stay for free. And it's an energy exchange. So I got into that. My, my whole life started to show up. Who I was started to make sense. Yeah, Once yeah. I gave up the American diet, a lot of the addictions and a lot of things that I was obsessed with food wise started falling away. Mm hmm that's been my experience too is that uh, you know that's the liberation of uh, this path i find that as you lighten up as your you lighten up you know your diet and your food and you get into fa fasting for me it was mm -hmm. just getting it's to that point where that equilibrium or that place of be here now that we were talking about becomes yes. more effortless it's uh the more that's shed you know yeah, and that's why I'm really driving toward the state, the full state, you know, of breatharianism. I want, I want the full state. Um, you deserve I'm, it. I realize household of years now, you know, and, and that was part of what Ellie Tom's Ellie Tom's coming was. I know you wanted to ask me about that more. He his coming was very pivotal in that um, I had known breatharianism to, could be happen. I was already experiencing myself going there. And mm -hmm. it was a truth, you know, um, but to have him come and see him and be with him for like 10 days where we just walked around the desert together and stuff. And he just taught and I got to absorb. I felt so blessed, you know, that he came out to my podunk little homestead in New Mexico to, you know, teach me. Um, it's an ashram now. <laughs> and he told me, you know, that I just follow the energy. I just do what it tells me. And, you know, I was guided. And he, he, toward, he guided me towards a more healthy way to pursue my breatharian practice because I was just going for it, you know, you're, I'm going to get it, you know. Uh, and he was like, no, slow down. Eat once a week with your family to stay connected with them. Like, not because you need it, but because you need to stay connected. And I did need it, but I didn't realize on the psychological level, it sure. becomes this thing like you were saying, like, you start getting into raw food, you know, and some of your friends break off or you realize these people aren't just aren't resonating at the same vibration anymore. And you're moving into a new vibration, but right. at the same time, you have love and connection with them. And you don't want to set people talk about cutting cords. I don't think that's even possible. I think you have to heal the cord through love if there's a problem, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, I, I see, I see that in, in places like places that I'm living, you've got um, uh, a new ager slash um, uh, awakened being who's living with a Christian and they get along really well, or he's gone off on the, the, uh, the journey of the freedom fighters and the sovereignty movement. And she thinks that television is reality. I mean, I see all this going on with all kinds of different relationships, but the relationship is solid because that's why they're together. If you're built on love and mutual respect, it has to entail, real love entails mutual respect regardless of exterior circumstances. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what that other person is doing. And if we can yeah. grow that state, I like the Buddhist idea of like, your love and love isn't as big as the person you love the most. 
it's as big as the person you love the least, the one that bothers you the most. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Well, that's yep. a good teacher. That's a good teacher for you. Uh, when we're out and when we're participating in the world of 2021. Um, now, I'm a student of A Course in Miracles. You guys are familiar with the books. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I get little gems from the Course in Miracles that drops into my brain throughout the day, particularly mm. when you have someone comes up in your face and they have to, they say whatever they say. It doesn't matter the emotion behind it. It doesn't matter how charged it is that they throw at you. Our job is to remember they're either saying one of two things, Amy, I love you or help me, I'm scared. So when someone comes after you and it feels like it's, it's attack mode, don't take defense, but soften up and receive them lovingly and it changes the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I totally see that. It's all a matter of their vibration because we're mirrors, you know, and sometimes the mirror's trying to throw something at you, but if you just let it reflect off, you know, instead of like reflecting back the same thing you know uh, yeah and you won't take it personal you're you're fine yeah that mm -hmm. whole thing that lonnie said of like if you're in your heart center you're always protected you know you you're always protected and so that's that's been the heart of my meditation i do a vajra yogini meditation where you mm -hmm. uh sort of visualize you know your heart center as being this feminine buddha you know, mm. um, cause we're all, you know, there's this whole, you know, kind of gender conversation that keeps riling up feathers here and there, but we all are all feminine to begin with. Our mm. heart center is this feminine nurturing mm -hmm. you know, center, you know, mm -hmm. comforting, mm -hmm. it's, but it's also, it, it means business. It just because it's loving doesn't mean like, like I like the Buddhist adage, do no harm, but take no shit. That's kind of how Vajra Yogini is. She's yeah. loving, she's seductive, but she's also wrathful. Um, so, yeah, because your, your heart has got to have that protection, you know, because of this uh, precious nature. You know, it is mm -hmm. the most precious part, organ in your body. You yep. Know? And so, Kali, Kali's going to come in with that, that flame and that sword, and she's going to cut away all your bullshit and all your illusion and all your, your negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of feel like slicing and cutting when it happens but if you let it happen it's surgery you know it's mm -hmm. psychic surgery it's cutting away the garbage that isn't you you know yeah and getting it back to the core that's what i like about the pranic experience and the pranic practice is getting more into this heart center and cutting away more of that um detritus that just isn't even it's part of the human experience but it's not what we are you know. Right. And we, we carry those stories and those the drama and the memories and the old traumas and pains longer than we need to. Yeah. Way, way. Every one of us. I definitely have. Have, have you noticed that? Uh, welcome back, Amy. Have you noticed that your ability to stay solid and loving when people come up to you and they're melting in your presence and they're crying and they're having breakthroughs are you able to just stand there lovingly and and uh help them get through it you know it's you get lots of practice as a parent <laughs> it's good yeah. practice for spiritual work you know where because that's that's what we're here to do for each other like really friends aren't your friend isn't here for just when it's fun, you know, his friend is when it's hard too, you know, we, and that's the support we can, you know, in like ayahuasca journey, they always talk about this, how the group, you start processing for each other psychically. You may be dealing with some crazy stuff that's actually the person's next to you because we can't avoid our connection. Mm -hmm. It's un And so sometimes when you're having a bad day or some crazy thoughts, they're mm -hmm. not even your thoughts. Your receipt, you know, because of this subtle electromagnetic conversation, it's mm -hmm. some empaths have to work on building, you know, the strong boundaries in their heart mind. Yeah, you know, because we're like radio, way. we're like radio stations. We dial in different people, different frequencies, and next thing you know, you're you're wrapped up in what they're going through, and you're feeling what they're feeling, and and it's you have to decipher that where am I, where are them, where who, uh, it's all one right it's you know you feel for them as an empath compassionately you want to help them process it you know 
Um, so that's the trick is how to do it without ha having your energy go run through the ringer in the mm -hmm. meantime. And that's the yeah. thing I understand about the breatharian experience. I'd like to know more about your breatharian experience too. Um, that's because uh, I've heard about it, you know, just through the ether from you, but you know, I'm trying to keep a beat on so many things and um, I'd like to know more about, to me, it's this whole energy balance thing, right? Well, um, my, my, uh, my experimentation with breatharianism is um, I look at the, now if, if I'm having fruit, that's basically what I eat fruit. Once in a while, I might go to potluck and I love the people. I know they put love into the food and I might just play with it and, and do that kind of thing. But um, I'm finding what allows me to, to play with the breatharian uh, lifestyles to look at the 23 hours, 24 hour, 22 and a half hours a day that I'm not going near food or drink. Mm -hmm. I threw this theory out and some people got it that if you only consume or drink uh, maybe an hour worth of all that during the day, you've got 22 hours, 23 hours of breatharianism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not going with it, but there's a component that I know, I, I mean, I don't know if I answered your question. No, that, I mean, that, that's just, that's, interesting to me in terms of your practice um because i see that there's almost it's just like gardening or or art like there's as many ways to approach the breatharian experience as there are practitioners mm -hmm. you know i know yeah. it's like devon has, has his own style you know ellie tom has his own style you know i have my own style you know um there's uh ray has okay. his you know and it's really the focus, people focus a lot on the not eating of food. It's an interesting thing. I think I'm really interested in it because I think it's one of those things that causes faith to become, you know, um, in oneself and in others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that, that's, that's almost like a service, you know. But on the other hand, um, you know, this whole thing, like I've experienced working with it, um, the need to stay socially connected with the other humans. Big so, time for me. So for me, like I drink liquids, tons of liquids all you know, during my period, because I just want to be in there with the people. I can yeah. feel that it's this emotional connection thing, you know. Well, I'm the same, I'm the same way, uh, Jesse. I, I've been a social creature since I can remember. I was raised with a family of two, a brother, a sister, a mother, a dad. So I'm so used to having like a core group of five to eight people around me at all times. So living in a retreat center, uh, there's anywhere from 10 to 20 people who go in and out of here during the week. And we've been having uh, last year and around August, I was able to put together a kirtan group of 21 people came by and chanted with us with instruments with no mass on. Yes. And uh, oh, my God, it was great. Everybody was so relieved. They felt like, OK, I can take out my clothes and be myself with everybody. So much is hidden when we can't smile at each other, you know, and yeah. it's, there's so much a human connection, you know, through nonverbal communication in our face, you know, and it's, it's really, I feel like it's a psyop, you know, but I mean, I don't want to go down all those roads. Thank you. So let, let's switch. Let, we're going <laughs> to switch. We're going to switch gears. Yeah. Just for a second. There's a thread that seems to be uh, in all the spiritual paths, in in the breatharian movement, in the Shivambu movement, that's barely discussed. And um, I'm going to discuss it now. There's something that's going to keep us in the game of life longer uh, with a better quality of life. And it's the idea of physical immortality. Now, in 2006, I wrote a, an article that got published in a bunch of magazines, and the title is your sacred living foods, your spiritual path, and your urine therapy won't save you from your mind. So if there's breatharians that have unconscious death wishes and they have unconscious self-hatred and bitterness, that's got to go. Mm -hmm. Or their breatharianism won't make it. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm totally on board with that. And the whole thing of, you know, the idea of physical immortality too is like the heart supposedly the heart could regenerate cells mm -hmm. indefinitely but it doesn't even need to okay. you still have the heart the original heart cells that you had when you were a baby um and 
um, the way uh, I've been studying this doctor who, or re this doctor has been doing this research in healing with um, voltage. And a salamander, you know, a salamander can like, they can even reform like heart and digestive organs, you know, if it gets mm -hmm. cut off, they Your get tail. The bite taken out of them. They can re regenerate vital organs even, and it's all done with voltage. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, and we are beings of energy, you know, uh, we're, this science is going to become the new oh. science, the new healing um, uh, trend in the coming years. I, I know it to be true. You know, mm -hmm. microbiome is going to be the, the jump off platform for people to understand bio photons more and, and the whole thing of energy. Right. And, well, um, we, but, we're moving, we're moving to high frequency or high vibrational lifestyles. In my last book, healing water from within, I included Elatom. Uh, he submitted an article. And so I honored him and he got in that book and we're moving toward high vibrational, uh, lifestyles because that's where we're guided to uh, the people who switched their diets dramatically didn't have to think overnight well should i do fruitarianism should i check out the prana path they don't even think twice there are people who are called they don't think twice about it they go i'm supposed to be doing this and it doesn't matter what their friends or family says they're gonna go yeah that's how it was for me i something uh hooked for me when i I think it was when I, especially when I saw that movie in the beginning, there was light. I was like, I, I, I got to do this. This, this sounds, sounds like the experience, you yeah. know? Um, and I totally agree with you that it's about the mind. You know, the whole experience is about consciousness and developing that, that sense of a loving flow of yeah. heart wisdom. You know, it's, it's our true nature. Um, so, and that's what happened to me when I started doing the fruitarian thing. It's just like overnight, I just lost interest in everything. Yeah. I'm going, well, mangoes are in season. I think I'll eat some mangoes. Yeah. <laughs> it became, that was me too, is like titillated. Like, you know, for uh, the first time I was in a long time, I was really excited about food. You know, I was like, wow, there's so much, you know, this is the candy of the earth, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It was great. Yeah, it's like when people come off a fast, the first bite is orgasmic. Yeah. Oh my God, a watermelon. <laughs> uh, I tell you, when I break a long dry fast, like I, I did a couple, just even two day dry fast a few weeks ago and coconut water was like the most divine thing, I tell you. <laughs> it was so amazing. It's amazing and your, your taste buds are at an all time high. Yeah. They've sharpened up. Yeah. Was there much, was there much, and I think I'm going to ask you, uh, was there much detox or downtime when you started moving into breatharianism? Um, I feel like, uh, I feel like I moved through it really gently and slowly. I think I actually started becoming a breatharian when I started sun gazing, uh, like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I just didn't realize, you know, because I definitely had, I could feel my fontanelle when I sun gaze, especially I did the whole thing of starting with 10 seconds and 20 then 30 up to 45 mm -hmm. minutes. It took almost a year at the top of that. I had the most, there's like three experiences that were like really revelatory consciousness experiences in my life. Uh, you know, the birth of my kids, mm -hmm. my first psychedelic experience and this, this was right on par, you know, with all of those and um, I felt so connected and I felt my fontanelle open up, mm -hmm. you know, this whole thing of breathing through the toroidal tube of your electromagnetic field. Mm -hmm. um, and so over, t over time, you know, I was just doing raw foods and, and, and moved into, like I said, doing dry fasting first 24, then 36. So I feel like I didn't really, I didn't really have any trouble. I was able to, because I'm a landscaper, gardener, you know, I'm running around all the time. I, I couldn't really afford to, like, take a lot of downtime. I took my four days to do my four-day dry fast, you know, and just was like, okay, nothing for four days. But Well, if you've got the willpower, I mean, I, I can tell 
when I'm doing three and four mile hikes every day and I look outside and it's 35 degrees mm -hmm. and I know that this thin frame of a body is going to be challenged to getting outside. I've put on my headset with some rock and roll music and say, fuck it, I'm going to make this walk. And I yeah. just will myself to do these exercises and, and, and work. And uh, I found myself having more projects over the last year when everybody else was kind of like trying to reserve things. You know, I was painting 65 foot murals on buildings and writing books and doing talk shows and, and people going, well, Sage, you need to rest and you don't look very healthy. I'm going, I'm running circles around people. I'm 66. So try to keep up people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the spirit. You know, a lot of people, you know, faced with difficulty we want to go down. Like we got to, you know, rise to it. That's our, our nature. We're strong. Every human being, every human being has enormous strength, enormous brilliance, mm -hmm. you know, enormous love. So, Absolutely. And, and everything any other human being has, and we can all have whatever we want in this life. We can create mm -hmm. a heaven in this world, but we have to, you know, I like what, what you're saying, you know, even about physical or mortality is like, as conscious creators, we, we can only achieve what we imagine and go for, mm -hmm. you know, if we imagine it and take action after it, of course, we're not going to experience it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we can use it and not experience it because you've already dismissed the idea in your mind. Yeah. Well, even if people say, well, I don't think I can achieve physical mortality. The first question I ask them is, you don't know that you can't. Right. I mean, you might be physically immortal right now, but you haven't really considered it. The secret to achieving physical mortality, whether you want to live forever or not, is to live without any misery. Mm -hmm. And for us, for you and I to live in an attitude of gratitude with our heart vibrating and all our chakras open, uh, we're going to enjoy the heck out of every moment. Yeah, I think of immortality as really more a state, you know, than, than like, a, you know, maybe being even in this vessel forever. It's a, a state of being that we can achieve in this vessel at the very least. Mm -hmm. the very least. So. so are we going to like, be blissed out like the gurus we go around in a bliss bubble all day <laughs> that's the idea that's what i'm going for <laughs> you know well, I really, we, you have to work your way there it's work you know it's people don't maybe not respect you know but it's a lot of work the inner work i feel like this is the you know un, untapped realm like we've you know been all over the whole planet we're going out into space and stuff but there's so much we haven't you know tapped into right inside our we have enormous potential that's waiting to be tapped just just waiting <laughs> so i'm like so, i'm pins and needles here like <laughs> all right everyone's gonna get this like you can see it because intermittent fasting is going up like juicing vegan diets grounding vim hof breath work like people this is look at how these are like cultural like uh you know, trends now, you know, mass trends. These are movements. Yes. So these are movements. People are, uh, we are upgrading. People are upgrading. People are evolving. People have decided that everything they were led to believe was true by the world, by society, education, politics, our parents, religion, television, science, medicine wasn't it. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're finding out that love is it. And more and more people are, are doing whatever they need to do in order to return to our original state of heaven. Yeah. And that's self-love. I think that's the, the start. And that's why all these, like, you know, things are popping up of like, oh, yeah, everyone feels like I need help. <laughs> have you noticed more people reaching out to you to have a conversation on like on Facebook or social media? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, grateful to be able to serve, too. That's, you know. I feel like everything happened at time for my life time just right. I'd been studying all this stuff about permaculture and herbalism and stuff for 20 years. I got, you know, kind of situated in my breatharian state and then this, you know, stuff hit the wall and I'm ready to serve, you know. Any earlier I might have been like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel ready. I do. I feel ready, you know, to help make transformation. I think this is the most meaningful time 
you know, that we could put forth that kind of energy and it will reap such good rewards from it too. So. Exactly. And um, your presence is powerful. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, you're making an impact on our planet. There are more and more people that are watching your uh, content that you're putting on YouTube and, and all over the place. So I love that you're, you're here. I love that you're in my life and I want you to just keep putting it out there because people need to uh, wake up and we're at the tipping point. So anything you say might be it. Well, thank you, Brother Sage. I love you too. I appreciate you and the way you've been holding it for so long. You know, torchbearers, you know, leaders have a lonely path because we got to go out in front, you know. And so I acknowledge and appreciate you for all, of, all you have done for this world also. Thank you. Thank you. It's been uh, one hell of a ride. And what's always humbling is to realize I'm not in control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> i mean miracles happen all day long when you're paying attention uh and you just always you don't have to i don't have to think about any anymore about am i in the right place with the right people doing the right thing yes do it mm -hmm. be right a good cheer. Be a that's, good cheer. that's the place right you know to just go we all have that we're all kind of we're all divine kings and queens we're all lions you know um don't let our your little self-doubts keep you from achieving your greatness you know because we all we all are great great beings we are great beings and uh any final words uh to our viewers um by the way make sure you get me all your um links and contact information so i can put it in the description when i upload it on youtube sure i'd love to um, yeah, the only thing I'd like to express is just, you know, my own heart's love to everyone out there in the world. You know, I always want to pray that all beings find peace, you know, and that I find peace so I can help all beings. Because, you know, as we go through, as, as we all take on, you know, this path, if going through the obstacles makes you a leader, it helps you so you can show another person through. So bless everyone out there i know there's so many leaders out there bless bless all of you for doing that work let's keep moving well said well said heart of a lion heart of a lion you are you even have a lion's mane <laughs> <laughs> yes i thank you all right Bye. much love to you we're I'm gonna close this off and uh, this will be i'll get you a link in a couple hours it's such a pleasure brother sage Love you lots. So good to connect and community with you. Let's keep this uh, thread going. Yeah, and if there's a chance to do a retreat over your property, I would love to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to put it together. I'll keep you in the loop. Yeah, I'd like to be part of that somehow. I'd like to maybe even do a Breatharian uh, community gathering or something um, or summit or some kind of thing at some time in the future. So let's keep let's keep the vibes flowing okay all Sounds right good much love to you much love blessed day have a all great right. day <laughs> oh here we go